Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. Thank you so much to, uh, to Sean for supporting the show that way. And you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date, November 18th, 1950, and the title is Warm Welcome, Sudden Death. Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It is a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia... By all means, try Anison. You like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A N A C I N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggists. In the middle of Asia, astride the highest Himalayas, lies the secret land of Tibet. For centuries, its capital, Lhasa, has been the forbidden city. Its lamasaries secure in their mountain fastness. But now, terror has begun to creep down the caravan route past Gartek and Darjeeling, and brought with it a small cylindrical object that has found its way to the offices of the Bureau in New York City. Hmm. A Tibetan prayer wheel. Ken. Small, but a pretty good specimen. Didn't know you were a collector, Chief. I'm not. I just thought you might like to read that strip of paper inside of it. I'd like Mm -hmm. your opinion. You mind? Uh Uh-huh. He who does not call for a light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. Hmm. It's an old Buddhist proverb. Yeah. It was passed to one of our men by a curio dealer in Darjeeling, an Anglo-Indian woman who worked for the Allies during the war. Name's Awani O'Hara. Awani O'Hara? Believe it or not. Said she bought the prayer wheel from an old monk who said he'd received it from Karai Lama himself. Karai Lama. Chief, remember reading about red agents infiltrating south into Tibet? Yes, Ken, of course. All right. Can mean only one thing. They're trying to move in on the Lama's government. Trying to soften it up so the puppet troops from the east can take over without a fight. It's an old trick of theirs. Yeah, there's no way of making sure, Ken. Westerners aren't even allowed inside the Patala Palace, you know. What's more, we can hardly interfere in the internal affairs of another power. Oh, we've said that before, Chief. In Romania, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. Look what happened. Besides, it's not just Tibet they're after. The Karai Lama's the spiritual leader of half of Central Asia. Northern India, Bhutan, Mongolia, Manchuria. Yes, that's true. Oh, then it is. And if they can pressure him into swinging over to their side, we might as well give up any hope of keeping the Iron Curtain from dropping over the whole Orient. Ken... Do you suppose that little proverb means the young Lama needs our help? Could be, Chief. But what can we do about it? Send a Sherman tank across the Himalayas to bring him out? And how could a man get into Tibet these days, anyway? Same way the little prayer wheel got out. So long, Chief. I'll send your postcard. Here you are, here you are. Make 
You would like maybe, Saeed, to buy an elephant? Souvenir of that jilling? What? A card from ivory from the Mughal dynasty and made by the ancient craftsmen from... Mr. Rex, you got here. You made it. Oh, I can't believe it. I... Hey, Gong, what are you doing here in Darjeeling? Mr. Thurston, I'm a Rocky Mountain guide in business with my cousin, Kai Ming Lu. Kai Ming Lu? Well, <laughs> he may not exactly be a cousin, but uh, he has the Zellschmidt nose. And probably the Zellschmidt eth- ethics. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Say, uh, how about a tour of the city? Nightlife, strange oriental delights... Ah, uh, Pagan, I'm looking for a lady. Well, why didn't you say so? Now, now there's a pretty little petunia who dances at the Café Karachi. Her name is Madame Awani O'Hara. Awani O'Hara? Oh, sure, I know her very well. Yeah, she's a hostess at the, at the Cobra Club or something. Just, just hail a rickshaw, Mr. X. She runs a curio shop. Uh, <clears throat> oh, sure, sure, yes, of course. <laughs> I know her place like the back of my head, yeah. Look, uh, look, you go two, two blocks down this way. Uh, the, um, no, you turn at the next corner, then go about... Here, Mr. Thurston, you hold the elephants, will you? I'm sure I've got a map of the city right here. Come in, sir. Come in. Madame Awani O'Hara? I am she. Oh, my name's Ken Thurston, madame. I'm a hobbyist of sorts, and just now I'm interested in Tibetan prayer wheels. I was told you might be able to help me. I see. Prayer wheels. They're very rare now, you know. Good specimens are hardly ever removed from Tibet. Sorry, Mr. Thurston, but I'm afraid I haven't a single one in stock. Oh, then probably you could uh, tell me where I might find one. Quite possibly. What kind of prayer wheel were you interested in? Uh, A friend of mine in the States had one. I think he said it came from your shop. It was quite small. Brass, I believe. uh, Inlaid with silver. I think that it would be best, Mr. Thurston, if you came back tonight. Say, about eight o'clock. I may be able to give you the information you want then. You, um, you'll obtain this information in Darjeeling? I did not say that. No. If you'll excuse me, it's time for my nap. No, oh, certainly. Uh, Madame O'Hara, just one question. I heard a proverb the other day and wondered about its source. It goes, He who does not call for light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well, do you know? No. No, I don't think I've ever heard it before. Good afternoon, young man. Hmm. Are you, Mr. Thurston? I found Madame O'Hara's shop for you. It's right where you just... Ca- oh, I guess you took a shortcut. Ah. You didn't buy nothing from the old witch. No. Why don't you tell me what you were looking for? Whatever it is, I can get a, a 10% discount. Thanks, Pagon, but I'm hunting for a genuine Tibetan prayer wheel. Oh, uh, hey, let's walk on the other side of the street, huh? Why? Well, this tall monk with the begging cup, he's been watching us. I think he's going to try to make a touch. A 32nd cousin of yours. Arms for the poor, arms for the hungry and homeless. Mr. Thurston. That's money you're giving him. Sub, I, I beg not for myself, but for those in need. For it is written that he who does not call for a light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. Come on, Mr. Thurston, let's not overdo no, wait, this. wait, wait, Pagos. That proverb, where'd you hear it? It is an old one in my country. It signifies only that men should aid one another in their quests through life. I heard you speak of a desire for a prayer wheel. Is it not so? Just where did you... Perhaps you may find what you seek at the monastery of Chai Zong, which is north 200 kilometers in Sikkim, on the border of Tibet. Thanks, I may try that. But now, where did you... Um, oh, wait. Uh, hey. hey, wait a minute. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Hey, what a disappearing act, eh? But don't worry, Mr. Thurston, if you're so set on giving away money to needy people, <laughs> there's always me. Well, funny, shades drawn, no lights. Madame O'Hara said eight o'clock. I wonder. 
Ah, oh, maybe she flew away in her broomstick. Oh, why don't we come back when it's daylight? That side window's open, Pagon. Here. Let me heist you up so you can take a look around inside our shop. But, Mr. X, I can't do that. I always get claustrophobia in high press. I... Up you go. <laughs> now, see anything? I don't see nobody around, Mr. Thurston. Oh, we're wasting our time. But that Madame O'Hara sure is a lousy housekeeper. Going off and leaving all that broken crockery in the floor and... And everything all tipsy-topsy like... Mr. Thurston, come back! What did I say? Don't leave me! Oh. That's... Mr. Thurston, that's breaking and entering and... It's, it's illegal, I think it's... Oh. That long yellow sash around her neck. Hmm. Been used as a garrote, Pagan. Oh, well, in that case... Huh? Yeah. To choke her to death. Oh. Pagan, you think some of your disreputable friends here in Darjeeling could promote us a couple of monks' robes, the kind pilgrims wear on the caravan to Lhasa? Oh, sure, sure. Any color you like. Red, brown, plaid. Uh, why are we going to Lhasa? We aren't yet. We're stopping at a monastery of Chai Zong. <laughs> What a joint. I've been in clinks that are better than this. Pagan, a monk's cell is supposed to be austere and simple. The lamas here at Chai Zong seek comfort for the spirit, not the body. Here, have another cup of tea. Tea? Ush. You'd think somebody tell this characters that bourbon's pretty good for the spirit, too. Come in. Mr. Thurston, look. Peace to you. I have been sent by Dao Sung, the patriarch of this lamasari, to bid you welcome. So our meeting outside Owani O'Hara's shop wasn't entirely coincidence. What is coincidence? Perhaps only the workings of the mind of God. Mm, perhaps. If you are free, Mr. Thurston, Dao Sung would like to extend his greetings in person. Why not? Pagan, you wait here. Oh, sure, sure, sure. This way, please. Dao Sung must not be kept waiting. I suppose you are somewhat surprised to see me here, Mr. Thurston. Not any more than I was at the way you disappeared in the crowd back at Darjeeling after suggesting that I come here. Oh, wait, please. Oh, I thought you said we shouldn't keep Dao Sung waiting. That monk who stepped into the shadows at the head of the stairs. The one in the yellow robe? Yes. It is very odd. The members of our sect do not wear that color. He must be of a different order. Yeah, he must be. Unless the members of your order carry guns. Guns? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Look out, get down. Oh. All right, come on. No, Mr. Thurston, wait. Wait, why wait? But he ran up to the inner courtyard. What difference does that make? It is hallowed ground. What? If you, an unbeliever, were to walk there, it would be desecrated. Heaven all forbid right, such... All right, all right. He's gone now anyway. You sure you don't know who he was? Had I only been able to glimpse his face. But now, of course, there is no way to identify him. Unless Dao Sung, as the ruler of our lamasari, can find a way to apprehend this evil one. Come, we must hurry and tell him of this most untoward occurrence. Yeah, if he doesn't know about it already. Oh, Mr. Thurston, I cannot apologize sufficiently... In these times, even a monastery is not always a place without violence. So I found out. Uh, since you Americans prefer directness, I shall be direct. Until a few years ago, I was the tutor of the young Karai Lama. Peace be with him. Last month, I returned to Lhasa. I found the Lama surrounded by new advisors. Men whom I did not know. Oh? And... As his highness laid his hand upon my head in blessing, he presented me with the prayer wheel which has by now reached you. Alone, I could do nothing to help him escape, but with your help, I will make another pilgrimage to Lhasa. And with your help, we can bring the Karai Lama back with us, back 
to freedom. Freedom. These advisors you speak of, what do you know about them? Very little, but a friend more recently returned from Tibet knows more. With your permission, I shall call him. Mei Xiao. Dao Song, I have been awaiting your summons. It is my wish, Mei Xiao, that you speak with Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston? Yes, sir. And that you tell Mr. Thurston of the things which have happened at Lhasa. Alas, our blessed Karai Lama is a virtual prisoner. For another man has become the true ruler of Tibet. One whom they call the Gold Hat. Oh? Just who is this Gold Hat? It is said that he was well educated in Russia, then later in China. Ah. Unfortunately, his real name is not known, nor for his identity. Well, that's not much to go on. However, it is known that unlike the orders with which we are familiar... He wears a robe of yellow. Yellow. And a yellow hat. His followers affect a similar costume. I see. Dao Sung, what do you suggest? If Mr. Thurston should be willing to undertake the pilgrimage to Lhasa... How soon can we leave? First, we have to walk all the way here to Lhasa. And now that we finally get to this Lama Palace, we have to crawl on our knees. Just be quiet and keep your head down. But I'm getting a creak in my neck. What's going on now? The Karai Lama is blessing Dao Sun. He's touching the old man's head with a tassel. Sounds like just a kid. Our turn is next. Now remember, crawl slowly and stay close behind me. Hey... What does he think it is? Halloween? The Karai Lama always wears a devil mask during these ceremonies. <laughs> what a joke. Hey, gone. Omni Wanan Biska. Your Highness, he who does not call for light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. The top of the south stairway at midnight. So be it. What does the bell mean? Uh, where is he going? The audience is over. Well, how do you like that? He didn't get around to me. Mr. Thurston. Oh, Your Highness. You are alone. That is good. This alcove, please. Let us waste no time. You have come a long way in answer to the summons in the prayer wheel. What do you propose? Plans have been made for you to join a native family traveling to the Indian frontier. From there, you will be escorted to the monastery at Chai Zong and safety. This has all been arranged by you? Yes, with the aid of Dao Sung. The caravan will leave at sunset tomorrow. Where is Dao Sung now? He uh, said something about returning to his lamasary. I see. Mr. Thurston, have you considered that it might have been a grave mistake for you to come here to Lhasa? Mistake? Yes. You see, you are now under arrest. Yeah. Yes, I see. And I shall be obliged to have you executed as a spy, Mr. X. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. A real-life mystery which puzzles people who own television sets is how in the world they ever lived without them. Without those puppet shows and Wild West sagas which keep little children fascinated while mother's getting dinner. Without those comedy programs which draw teenagers home like magnets. Without those sports events which so magically erase the day's cares from dad's face. And without those wonderful plays which make a woman see her own life in proportion. Why don't you make this a television Christmas for your family? 
Naturally, you will want RCA Victor Television, America's favorite, already proven in over a million homes. So early next week, see your RCA Victor dealer and choose from 18 beautiful new million-proof models, the RCA Victor Masterpiece, which will keep the cheerful contentment of Christmas alive at your house the whole year around. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I've been expecting you. You've come to get me out of the clink, eh? Does it look like it, Pagan? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, welcome aboard, Mr. X. Say, you don't really think they're going to hang us, do you? No, Pagan, I know them. They're not. <laughs> I knew they wouldn't dare to do that. No, in Tibet, they execute by beheading. You mean... Oh, Mr. Thurston, what a messy way to die. Wait. May show. Aha, so they got you too, eh? Hey, wait a minute. You're, you're outside the bars and we're inside. Yes, Mr. Zellschmidt. Quite simple, Pagan. Me Shao is the gold hat. Well, sure, but that's no reason... Huh? You seem very sure of that, Mr. Thurston. It all adds up, Me Shao. The infiltration boys found out about the prayer wheel. But when they traced it to Darjeeling, it was already gone. So the gold hat moved in on Dao Sung and stuck around to wait for us. I bow to your brilliance, Mr. Thurston. How sad that such a fossil mine should serve the decadent capitalists of Wall Street. From whom you're planning to rescue the poor downtrodden Tibetans. And you are going to help me. Your execution will serve as an object lesson to those who would interfere in the internal affairs of my country. I see. And now that the Karai Lama is under your thumb, there'll be no one to stop you and the invaders from taking over. But I still don't understand why he should call for help and then have us in prison. Yeah, the dirty it no good... It is very simple. The great Lama has come to see that our way is the right one for Tibet. May we. It was pretty sudden, wasn't it? He gave that prayer wheel to his old tutor only two weeks ago. Yeah, and when we come to help him, he sticks us in a hole on the ground. I tell you that Karai Lama is no good Joe. Matter of fact, Pagan, I've been thinking exactly the same thing. Remember when he blessed Dao Sung in the throne room? Sure. He touched him on the head with the gold tassel. The lowest form of blessing. Huh? Isn't that right, my Shao? The gestures of religion do not concern me, Mr. Thurston. No, I'm sure they don't. But in this case, it was more than a gesture. If the Lama had recognized his friend and teacher, he would have placed his hands on the old man's head. Well, maybe he couldn't see very good through that Halloween mask he was wearing. On the other hand, that same mask would have kept Dao Sung from seeing the Lama's face. From recognizing a false Lama. You mean... you mean they switched Lamas? Suppose you answer that question, Nay Sao. What possible difference could that make to you now, Mr. Thurston? That's true. We're scheduled for execution, aren't we? There will be no formal execution. Instead... No, no, please, please, point the thing out the other way, will you? It will be so much simpler this way, will it not? An American executed might require explanation, but if it were simply called a disappearance, hmm? Has it occurred to you, Mei Shao, that if I discover the imposture, Dao Sung will discover it too? What difference can it make? You seem to underestimate the efficiency of my organization. Come, closer to the bars. Look, down the hall. Even now my soldiers are bringing your friend or son to join you. Well, Mr. X. Ah, yes, you're efficient. Dao Sung. Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston. All is well. What about these soldiers? Well, as you suggested, I did not leave the city entirely, but camped on the outskirts until a loyal one here in the palace... He informed me of what had happened to my three friends. Three? And this joker still thinks Mei Shao is his friend. You were generous enough to come to my help. Now I have come to yours. These men who look like soldiers are, in reality, fellow monks. What? Wait, Dao Song. Well, there is no risk. We were able to pass this sentry safely. Now we have only to leave as we came. There is one thing you have overlooked, Dao Song. Yes? This gun I hold... Me show. God. God. Ring the alarm. I said ring the... What? As I told you, 
These men are our friends. Yes, and I'll shoot any who stands in my way. Just a minute, Michel. What a haymaker. I know your religion disapproves of violence, Dao Sung, but I'm sure you won't mind an exception in the case of the gold hat. The gold hat? Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston. In this case, I do approve your very excellent uh, right hook to the jaw. <laughs> Here. Keep looking. Okay. We'll go down this corridor, our son. Perhaps we are too late, Mr. Thurston. The true llama may have been killed. I don't think so. They're more efficient than that. Torture your enemy, break him in mind or body, but keep him alive. He may be useful. This is the only prison in Lhasa. If he is a prisoner, he must be here somewhere. What about this door? Here now. Peace be with your highness. Dao Sung, revered teacher, rise and take my thanks, you and your friends. Now we must hurry, highness, if we are to be beyond the palace walls when the gold hat recovers from the effects of the uh, uh, right hook. Right? I'm sorry to disagree, Dao Sung, but the Karai Lama is staying here, so are we. But, Mr. Thurston, it was to aid his escape that we came to Lhasa. That may be. If we run away... We'll save his neck and ours. But the gold hat will stay in power, and the false llama be the leader of Tibet. Your Highness, the choice is up to you. We save your life, or risk it trying to save your country. There is no choice, Mr. Thurston. My country. Good. Now, if the palace guard were assembled, would they still be loyal to you? Some of the officers have been bribed by the gold hat, but the rank and file are loyal to me. That is why my alter ego has never dared to appear before the people without his mask. Sounds like the old story, the organized few pushing around everybody else who didn't know what was happening until it was too late. Well, maybe we can give the bully boys a taste of their own medicine. But, Mr. X, that's the alarm gong. It'll bring the guards. Right, they gong. Mr. X, I can't look. The price of treason is pretty high, Pagan. It's not what's happening to Mao Shao and that phony llama. It's the heavy blade. It's so big and so sharp. Mr. X, they sharpen it for us. Well, Your Highness. Mr. X, when the gold hat and his people came and made themselves powerful here, I did not strike against them because I wanted peace and thought myself alone in a world gone mad. I shall not make that mistake again. Your Highness, it's taken us a long time to learn that in our world no man lives alone, and no country. That we must each of us bring light to those who cry out in the darkness, lest all of mankind fall into the well. Peace be with you and your people. Here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Mr. X starts out on what looks like a fishing trip off Baja, California, but ends up with a strange combination of a beautiful woman, an important foreign agent, and a submarine, to say nothing of Leon Belasco as paid on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return to The Man Called X. It's a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, First in television. And by Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anacin, Coronos, Bicidol, and other fine drug products. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Robert Libbett and Frank Burt. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and Bob Hope, Jimmy Durante, Eddie Cantor, Perry Como, Mindy Carson, and Jose Ferrer. And until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Jimmy Durante and Bob Hope clown tomorrow on The Big Show on NBC.
Welcome back. I kind of think that with the whole yellow hat or gold hat uh, thing, uh, it was a bit of a research mistake. Because when I was, you know, doing a little bit of research on this, I found that the yellow hat is actually something that is symbolic of the predominant sect in Tibetan Buddhism uh, to which the Dalai Lama belongs. And the Lama in this story is clearly a stand-in for the Dalai Lama. And this episode really does tie into that whole controversy from a relatively early stage. It was broadcast the day after the current Dalai Lama was invested with full political powers in Tibet. A situation that would continue on for nine years as things continued to escalate between uh, the Dalai Lama and Tibet. And he did actually end up having to flee the country and has lived the last 62 years in exile with a government in exile in India. One thing I thought while listening to the story is that it's really interesting in traveling to Tibet that essentially Pagan uh, seems to be along to provide the uh, cultural insensitivity. <laughs> he almost seems to be going out of his way to offend and insult everyone. Of course, that is in contrast to our hero, uh, Mr. X, who really throughout the story shows great respect and reverence for other people and their way of life uh, as he uh, travels through. And I think that is more the type of U.S. citizen that probably the writers and certainly the U.S. government wanted people to be when they went overseas either as civilians or in the military. RCA Victor ad cracked me up a bit uh, because, you know, you, you have a couple things in there. Essentially, uh, the ads, you know, really going early on the selling point of television as a babysitter. Uh, you know, uh, we they used Howdy Doody back in the 1950s, but uh, we just tend to have, I guess, a less reputable and responsible ones than we used to. And then there was the line in the ad about wonderful plays that help women put their keep their lives in proportion. What are they talking about? Are they saying that the plays, you know, like the sort of melodrama sort of pl oh, and soap operas that were targeted towards women, that women would watch them and say, well, at least my life is not that bad. Or is there some meaning to the phrase that I might be missing? As to the promise that bringing a television into your home will bring you contentment, I'd like to introduce these RCA advertising uh, executives, my parents, and the parents of other people who raised two or more children while only having one television set. That really did not work out very well, RCA, but I guess it's the thought that counts. All right, listener comments and feedback now. Sean writes, thank you for your broadcast. Much enjoyed and much appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Sean. And I also want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Kevin, Patreon supporter since March 2017. Currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Kevin. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Mystery is My Hobby. Next Wednesday, The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, and